Hi, in this short video I'll explain the physics of how radiation from Wi-Fi and mobile phones, including the new 5G, interacts with our bodies. The other videos on my channel are aimed mainly at A-level physics students, but I'll try and make this one as accessible to everyone as possible. First, what do we mean by radiation? We are usually referring to the electromagnetic spectrum. In the middle of this spectrum is the visible light that is entering your eyes right now going from low frequency red light to higher frequency violet light. Below red we have infrared. Uh, we all produce infrared as body heat, it's what thermal cameras detect. And below that we have microwaves and then radio waves. Most of the radiation above violet is blocked by our atmosphere and that's a very good thing as we'll see in a moment. But some ultraviolet light makes it through and this causes suntans, sunburn and skin cancer. We also have uh, X-rays and gamma rays. When radiation hits something, it's got a few options. It can be reflected, transmitted, like sunlight through a window, or absorbed. It's the radiation that gets absorbed that causes us harm. So let's consider what can happen if that happens. There are two options. It can ionise the atoms in our body. I'll explain what that means in a moment. Or it can heat up the atoms in our body. So what is ionisation? All radiation travels at the speed of light in little packets called photons. When one of these photons hits an atom in your body, it may have enough energy to knock one of the electrons in your atom right off. This is called ionisation. Why is that a problem? To understand, we need to zoom out to the chemistry. If we ionise an atom, we create an ion, which can join other ions to form new chemicals. If we zoom out again to the biology, this causes the DNA inside our cells to mutate. This causes cancer. Okay, so radiation can cause cancer, so surely 5G is dangerous. Well, not quite. A photon can only knock out an electron if it has enough energy, and that energy is directly related to the frequency of the radiation. It doesn't matter how many photons we throw at the atom, only one can interact with an atom at a time. Let's think about the element with the lowest ionisation energy, cesium. There isn't much cesium in our bodies, but if 5G can't ionise that, it means it can't ionise any of the atoms that are in our bodies. Cesium has an ionisation energy of about 6.2 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Now, if you're not familiar with standard form, that is 0. 0.000000000000000062 joules. It's not very much energy. But we need to know how much energy a 5G photon has. 5G uses a similar range of frequencies to Wi-Fi, going up to around 3.6 gigahertz, which means that it's microwave radiation. The Planck-Einstein equation allows us to calculate the energy of each photon of 5G microwave radiation. So we, it's a simple equation, E equals HF. H here is a constant known as the Planck constant, and it has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. And we multiply that by the frequency of the 5G microwave radiation, which is 3.6 multiplied by 10 to the power of 9, because it's gigahertz, it's, it's 3.6 billion hertz. And that gives us an answer of 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus 24 joules. Or to put it more simply, it is 260,000 times smaller than the energy that is needed to ionise even the most easily ionised atom, which is cesium. So we can safely say that 5G radiation is not ionising. The photons simply do not have the energy that would be needed to ionise any of the atoms in our bodies. By the way, photons of ultraviolet light from the sun definitely do exceed this level, so please wear sunscreen. Since the photon energies are so small, the only thing 5G or Wi-Fi radiation can do to our bodies is to heat us up. In this case, it's the intensity of the radiation, how much energy hits us every second, that matters. Now let's see if that's significant. A typical mobile phone mast has a power of about 50 watts. This means that 50 joules of radiation energy are being produced by the, the phone mast every second. 
This is a little bit less than this light bulb. The radiation is emitted in all directions and spreads out as it moves further away. This is called the inverse square law. As our distance from the mast doubles, the intensity of the radiation gets four times lower because it is now being spread over a bigger area. Intensity is equal to the power divided by the area that, is, that it is spread over. And since it's spreading out in all directions around the mast, that area is actually the area of a sphere. So we can say that the intensity is equal to the power divided by the area of a sphere, which is 4 pi multiplied by the radius, so how far away from the mast you are, squared. So if we were standing, for example, 5 meters away from our mast, what intensity would we experience? Well, the power of our mast, remember, is just 50 watts. Divide that by 4 pi times 5 squared. 5 is our distance, and that gives you an intensity of 0 0.16 watts per square meter. For comparison, the sunlight reaching the Earth's surface has an energy of approximately 1000 watts per square meter. So even if you're standing really close to a 5G mast, you are receiving about 6000 times less radiation than on that sunny day. The heating effect of 5G and Wi-Fi is therefore almost zero. I hope this video has helped to clear up some of the myths around Wi-Fi and 5G. Please feel free to share it and let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments.